Hello, and welcome to the virtual Scandinavia House and to in New York and today's book talk, Big Heart, Strong Hands by the Norwegian photographer and author Anne-Helene Gelstad. And, then, and today's program is moderated by Erica Larson. The book was published by Dewey Lewis and is available in, both in the US and in Europe. This is the second printing of the book with the first printing selling out in two months. So if you would like to purchase it, I would not wait too much. Um, I will include the link to purchase the book in both the US and, the, and, and in Europe. I would like to thank our partners and collaborators in this event today, the Consulate General of Estonia and the no Royal Norwegian Consulate General, both in New York, especially Jana Kaperna and Marit Bakalund Rosenberg, who initiated this program. Anne Helene also asked me to read her acknowledgements. She says this project could not have been realized with, with, without the support, help, and goodwill of many. First and foremost, my warmest thanks to each and each and every one of the amazing women of Kiknu and Mania Islands who invited me into their homes and generously let me photograph, photograph them and their daily lives. Thanks to Mari Metas, chairwoman of the Kiknu Cultural Space Foundation for their local assistance and sharing the information. Thanks to Maya Av, the manager of Kiknu Museum for arranging my exhibition there and around Estonia and for giving me valuable information about Kiknu history. Thanks to Dewey Lewis for believing in this project and reviewing the manuscript. And for the technical expertise, Dewey Lewis Publishing has storehouses in England and the US. And the book was recently uh, reprinted and can be ordered through the websites, uh, deweylewis.com. Thanks to the Norwegian Professional Photographer Fund and the Norwegian Nonfiction Writers and Translator Association for financial support that has made this book possible. Thank you very much for arranging this uh, webinar. The Consul General of Estonia in New York, the Royal Norwegian Consul General in New York, ASF and Scandinavia House, uh, Deputy Consul General Marit Rodensborg, and Cultural Affairs Coordinator Janneke Perna, and photographer Erika Larsen. Now it is my great pleasure to welcome uh, Ms. Kari Kukna and Ms. Harriet Berg, the Consul Generals of Estonia and Norway, uh, respectively. Uh, please welcome Kari. Uh, dear guests, it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Consulate General of Estonia to this virtual meeting with photographer Anne Helena Gjelsted on her documentary book, Be Heart, Strong Hands. I would like to thank the Scandinavian House and the Consulate General of Norway for their collaboration, as well as today's moderator, Erika Larsen. As you might know, Estonia is a small country in Northern Europe with a population of 1.3 million. Within this small country, there are two little islands called Mania and Kihno that both have very special matriarchal cultures. And Kihno was added in 2008 to the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO. I'm very glad that the world has noticed the rare culture on these geographically isolated islands where women take care of almost everything on land as their husbands are at sea. It often takes someone from outside to notice the rarity and originality of a cultural pearl. And photographer Anne Helena Yelstad has noticed and captured it so well. And thanks to her beautiful book, so many eyes across the globe are able to see it. Thank you. I visited the Kino Island when I was a student, and I still keep the unforgettable experiences and memories close to my heart. The islands are unique. And we are very fortunate to hear more about its uniqueness through Anne Helena Yelsted eyes. And now it is my honor to give the floor to the Consul General of Norway, Miss Harriet Berg. I wish you all a wonderful event together. Thank you. I wish you all a warm welcome. My name is Harriet Berg and I'm the Norwegian Consul General in New York. A core task for the Norwegian Consulate General is to promote Norwegian arts and culture in New York and on the East Coast. In this project, we're able to bring both high quality literature and photography to American audiences. 
We are very proud to present the work of Norwegian author and photographer Anne-Helene Gjelsta to the US. Her book about the women on the Kinu Island is truly astonishing, both because of her award-winning photography skills, the remarkable community she's describing, but also because of the time, dedication and devotion Gjelsta put into this project. I look forward to hear about how Anna Helene was able to gain trust and become part of this community to the extent needed to complete this project. Historically, the tradition of women taking charge of everything, often under harsh conditions, while the men are away, is certainly something we can recognize also from small, remote communities in Norway and from other places in the world as well. What is so truly remarkable about the community Jelsta was photographing is how time seems to have stand still, so that the culture has been preserved, seemingly untouched by the outside world. I'm also very happy that Erika Larsen will be today's moderator, with her strong connections to Norway and the Arctic region and her experience from working with cultures that live in close relationships with nature. Thank you also to our friends at the Consulate General of Estonia for being both initiators of and partners in this project. Estonian and Norway enjoy a strong friendship. We are close partners in the Nordic Baltic region, in Europe and in the UN. Our human and cultural ties are also strong. It's therefore been a great pleasure to collaborate on this project. Thank you also to the American Scandinavian Foundation and especially to Kyle Reinhardt for organizing this event. It would have been wonderful to have this event live at Scandinavia House in New York. But this long and painful year has certainly taught us that a digital event has many advantages. And throughout the pandemic, Kyle has shown us over again that often all you need to create a wonderful cultural experience is to bring interesting people together for a well-prepared and thoughtful conversation. This is also what we will be served here today. And I wish you all a great event. Thank you. This is a story about beauty, about olden days, about a culture that is disappearing, about the meaning of being a human being. One old woman, she said, you don't want to take pictures of me because I'm old and I'm ugly. So and I said, but you know, it's nice to be old. I love your old hands. I love the wrinkles. Of course, I love their wrinkles more than mine. <laughs> I'm Anna Helene Gjelstad, a Norwegian photographer from just outside of Oslo. You don't need to smile when you look at photographs, it becomes such a fake smile. I'm a portrait photographer. I love to capture soulful portraits. Portraits that mean something to the people that see them and also to the people that are portrayed. They uh, often uh, talk about themselves like a matriarchy. And the reason for that is that the women have been doing everything on dry land. They have been uh, bringing up the children, making the clothes. They have been uh, running the farm. The men have been at sea. They have been working abroad. They have been doing the fishing and the seal hunting for ages. The tractor was ruined, the men wasn't there, so the women had to learn themselves to repair the tractor. They had to uh, feed animals, keeping horses to work on the field if they didn't have the tractor, to keep cows for the milk, chickens, sheep to make uh, wool so that they could get clothes in the winter time. One of the big differences is that women are grouping together and men are grouping together, like at a party, women dance with each other. Uh, women do things that women do together, like meeting together to do the knitting and teaching the young girls in handicrafts and such. But it's not just one sex, because the men are there, they are just not participating in the everyday life. They are there, of 
course. One old lady had died and I was asked to photograph her funeral. It was in her kitchen, the ceremony with the women. And it was really emotional and very strong for me to be part of this closed society's goodbye to this old woman that was lying there in the coffin in her kitchen three hours after she passed away. And that made a huge change for me. I knew I had to document this old women's lives culture that soon will be history. And I think they experienced that I saw behind somehow. I saw uh, a little deeper about their life struggle and everything. The traditional cultural space is on UNESCO's World Heritage uh, list because of their traditions in handicrafts and in old singing, in wedding rituals. Kishno Virve is uh, one of Estonia's most loved folk singers. Everybody in Estonia knows Kishno Virve and everybody loves her. So when I photographed her and her son Edi, and I gave her the picture. She told me that this was the first picture of herself and her son taken ever. And that was really meaning so much to me to see how important it is to take those pictures, to take those family pictures. That you can be such a famous person and you have never been photographed together with your son. It tells me how important our job as photographers really are and how much our images mean to certain people. I felt the need to document this culture and uh, their old ladies and their stories. And it gave me a great insight into the Soviet Union, to different lives, and how it has been to manage with the little they have. And still, I, it was my inner belief that I had to capture this, put it in a book, write the stories, get the women to tell some of their stories about their lives, about their happiness and their hard days, about the food they were eating when they were young, about their animals, husbands, about the culture, how it was to live in a, such a special place. This is a story about the past that is important for the future. We need to know where we came from. This is a story about dignity, how people have managed to survive with very little. It's a story about war, it's a story about peace, it's a story about children growing up, about women taking care of everything. It's a story I had to tell to keep it for the future. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Anne Helene Gelsted. She is an award-winning photogra Norwegian photographer and educator whose work has been exhibited worldwide. Her passion is photograph photographing people for the and for the past 11 years, she has portrayed the lives of the older women on the Estonian islands of Kiknu and Mania in the Baltic Sea. For her, Big Heart Strong Hand is her contribution to record and help preserve the future of this unique culture. And moderating today is Erica Larson. She is a multidisciplinary storytelling who believes that photography is one of the most important ways of exploring our understanding of time. Her monograph, Sami, Walking with Reindeer, a reflection of, time, of her time living in, in the Scandinavian Arctic was published in 2013. She was a 2017 fellow with the National Geographic Society for her ongoing project exploring how rituals can help us communicate our relationship to the consciousness uh, and daily life. Her work has been uh, included in the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery, National 
Geographic Society, Photographics, Photographiska Museum, and the United, United States Embassy in Oslo. In 2020, she was the Elsa Skidmore Award recipient for immersive storytelling. Please welcome Anne Helene and Erica. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so just really quickly, um, we're going to get started. I'm just going to share the screen here. Give me one moment, please. And um, um, so mostly, Anne Helene is really going to, to guide us on her, her, her journey and her beautiful story. But I just want to say one thing before we begin. Um, you know, uh, Kyle said photography for me is, is really, it is, it's one of the most important ways that we relate to, to what it means to be human, to our, our journey on this earth. And when I get the chance to, to see photographers and, and, and other photographs that bring us on a journey, um, the, I, I, my heart opens to a couple of things and the two of them are respect and beauty. And with Anne Helene's work, um, she has done both of these um, so, so, so um, importantly. Um, her work is so full of respect, but more importantly, she sees the beauty in every stage of what it means to be human. And she shares that in every photograph through her words and also just her being of how she leads us as a storyteller. So I'm very honored to be here today and, and to get to, um, uh, you know, help a bit to bring this story out. So thank you so much, Anne Helene. <laughs> I'm the um, one who say thank you. So I'm going to just start the presentation, but please take it from here. Um, where are we? Why, why these pictures? Tell us. Well, we are in Kishno Island, and I thought it was interesting to show pictures uh, more like what you will experience as a tourist if you go there now, because uh, the women like to, to show their culture, to gather tourists, to knit together. Uh, so I thought it was nice to start off with some, some kind of tourist pictures which is different from my work but still what you will experience if you go there to see the colorful women there uh, there uh... oh no hmm. have we frozen carl kyle sorry excuse me kyle have we yes, frozen it looks like we froze she okay froze. So, um okay no worries, we'll get it back. Sometimes with this Zoom, this is kind of right. I think we're all getting used to the Zoom craziness that sometimes we, we're dealing with this. So one second. Yeah. Maybe while we're getting her back, Erica, oh, here she comes. There she okay. is. Hi. Okay. Oops. Um, just, uh, um, Anne Helene, don't forget to unmute yourself, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay. So, um, all right, back. <laughs> Here we go. Technical. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you were saying that we were talking about why these beginning images, and, and if I understand correctly, really, this is what anyone would see if they went to visit. But this is important for you to share, I think, to, to help us understand, um, you know, the kind of the, the role as a storyteller, what, how you first arrive, and then the depth of what you were able to, to, to experience throughout the years by continuing to go back. Yeah, and, and if you look closely, you will see that the women look kind of the same, but they look different. So if you are interested in full costumes, you will see that they look the same, but they are different. And this is the living full, cost, full cultures. So it means the women are making clothes for themselves that is suiting their uh, life at that moment. And uh, yeah, this is from uh, St. John's Eve, all the women together uh, with the scarves, the colors, it's a very colorful, culture which is beautiful for me like a textile designer also I find this very interesting and uh, young and old wearing this uh, kerchiefs and um, 
Also, this picture is from the St. John's Eve. We will see a few from that time. And you see the old Kichno women, ladies together in their styles. And then the tourists are there and the kids are there. And it's really a wonderful uh, celebration evening. So more pictures from this event I have. And can, can I ask you a question? Because I think something that would be interesting to know for those that don't. Um, because you were talking to me, first of all, that so the first time you went was in 2005, if, if I'm correct, but yes. what brought you there? I mean, you're a textile artist, and I think just that that initial understanding, that relationship you had with these women is really important for people to understand, and that this was really the first event that you went to because of that connection. So what was that like? Just explain a bit about that. Yeah, at that time I had my knitting studio in Kardla in Hiyuma, another big island in Estonia, where I was hiring unemployed women to do my uh, knitting clothes, which I was selling in Norway, in, in Europe, in a little bit in America as well. And uh, it was a Scandinavian knitting um, uh, meeting that also took us around in Estonia. And one, one trip was also to Kishno Island to meet the culture there, to learn about their knittings, about their weaving, the traditions, so, um, and seeing the culture. And uh, so I came there as a textile designer, as a clothes designer or a fashion designer, you might call it, but also like a handicraft person. Uh, and I really fell in love with this culture and this living culture that everybody uh, look the same, but they look different. You can see the joy they have in the dressing, how, how beautiful everything is, and uh, the connections also with folk costumes around the globe, actually, like in, you can see the stripes, reminds of Norwegian um, carpets for the wall, or the clothes that we were wearing in olden days in Norway, or the textiles in Mexico. Uh, so many similarities, and um, this is also a picture from St. John's Eve. You see the children are dressed up and they're dancing. The boy is not so happy. The girl is very happy and they learn to dance at young age. Um, and just uh, uh, very, uh, a living culture that is uh, very heartful and uh, everybody loves to come there. They dress up in the nicest uh, clothes. So if you see this red uh, care shift this woman is wearing, she is Ella. This could probably 100 years on a Russian care shift that she maybe have inherited from her grandmother. They take care of the things and every, every item means something special, um, which uh, for me is very heartful and very, very much alive and very beautiful. But so one of the things, um, just so so we get that. So you sh you came in two thousand five. You came with this. You know you you also probably had a special sort of eye to to kind of think about the colors, think that everything had a meaning. But but in general, this is something that um, if somebody comes to Estonia and wants to go, they can come visit. And this is really the view that they will see. Um, yeah. Women coming out, presenting their 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 hearts and their culture. Um, but what for you, what, what made you go back and how did you feel welcome to continue to go back? Well, uh, well I, had, I came to Estonia in 2000. Uh, so I know Estonia for over 20 years and then, then I had started up my knitting business. Uh, it was just uh, just an amazing culture. I was, uh, I've always been very, uh, Everybody in Estonia has been very friendly to me, even if it has been a difficult language, I have never felt alone. Uh, if you go back one picture, please, Erika. This is uh, uh, the renovation of the Kichno Museum. And as you can see, the house is red uh, and around the windows is pink because red is the most beautiful culture color in Kichno culture. And you see the patriarch of the Greek uh, Orthodox Church, the famous, is there. He's a great friend of Kishno. He's there to, to uh, um, uh, or bless the new, um, uh, the new museum. The women are dressed up in their most colorful and beautiful clothes. You see, everybody are dressed in red because this is a celebration. 
And uh, I mean, it's, it's like going into a fairy tale when you experience like this, you're part of a movie or something in, uh, and this is real people. And, and for me being from Norway, I'm not ashamed of saying, uh, who are you? I went to the Patriarch Stefanos and I say, you look, you look like a special person, but excuse me for asking, I don't know who you are. And I think he liked that. And uh, we kind of, or every time we met, he was, very friendly and, and sweet and uh, wonderful experience and wonderful people, everybody here, yeah. And this is in the middle, you see Kishna Virva. We will talk about her later. She is on the way to the harbor and she is carrying the light uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to lit the fire for the Songfest festival, which is every year. And Kishno Virve, she is an amazing person. So everybody loves her. And uh, you can see everybody are dressed up in their most beautiful clothes. Uh, women are playing accordion, it's singing, there's dancing on the harbor. Um, if you move to the next picture, you will see the okay. old women dancing together. They do that all the time, dressing up. Katrin is dressed up with this uh, headpiece that is very high. And, and Rosi is dressed up and young, uh, young people, like uh, kids are dancing and it's a big party. And they are very good at celebrating big and little things in Kishno culture, I think. And now we're is leaving to the sea. And you can see women are dressed up and the men are maybe not so dressed up. They are um, taking the ship to, to the mainland and the Virve is going away with this uh, torch or to, to lift the torch uh, with the light. Okay. And uh, yeah, beautiful. So, so this is, uh, if the, the first picture is, is more what you would experience if you go there, something like that. You will see the folk culture. Now we are going into my story, the story I had to tell. And this is, um, we are going to the, on the sea because this is an island and we had to wait for the ice to break. The black stripe in the horizon, this is Kishno Island. And so how uh, long before that, or how long between that 2005 visit that we just saw to your first visit back? What, and how much time? And then how did you get back the second time? Yeah, in 2008, I went back because at that time I learned, started to learn photography. Uh, I had to close down my knitting business. Uh, I was 50 years old. It was in 2006 and I, I, I thought, what will I do with my life now? Because it wasn't possible for me to run a knitting business in Norway, in Estonia with what I did. Oh, I think we've frozen again, Kyle. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll send her a message. Okay, actually, um, yeah, I'm very interested when she comes back, I, you know, because to to kind of pick up photography, like she said at 50, but to come back now, not only as somebody um, interested in relating this culture of textiles and background she had to that, she decided to like made a very conscious decision to come back as a storyteller. And um, for me, that means she made a conscious decision to come back and to listen and to learn and to engage in, in a practice of, of um, trying to, um, oh, there we are, she's back. Uh, please, un uh, don't forget to unmute, perfect. Okay. So <laughs> Sorry, and, and Elaine, I was just saying why you, why, why you were gone for a minute, because um, you're about to, you know, you talked about picking up photography at 50 and coming back. And this idea of when you decide to come back as a photographer, you, you're really deciding to come back as a storyteller, which means you're coming back as a listener. So I don't know if you agree with that, but please continue with your... your well, and then, yeah, and then I remember this wonderful Kishno women and I thought, okay, I haven't been to Estonia for a few years, so I need to go back. And I took up my connections and uh, I thought, okay, I will visit. I will see if I can take a few pictures. Uh, and uh, that was the beginning of this story. Uh, it was the beginning. I was a student. I didn't know my camera settings, but I, <laughs> I didn't know how to be shy either. So I thought, okay, I will go with my camera. I will see what happens. I will do my best, which is always my philosophy to do my best every day. And uh, I met this fantastic Kishno people and I took it from there. Uh, never knowing I would do this for so many years, of course. Um, yeah, so the, this 
pictures. Uh, I wanted to show a little bit about Kichno language uh, landscapes. I thought it was important to show what is around uh, the little farm. If you see this, the the straws, the abundant, the, I think it is a sheep shed, maybe. I, I see beauty in these things and I, I just need to photograph them. This is part of my book. The long road, the houses, the little winter. I've been there in different seasons, which I think was important also to do and, and show as much as I could. This is the main square in Kichno Island. If you look closer, you will see women are in traditional Kichno skirts, which they call Kichno Kert. Uh, and uh, one woman is in black skirt. It means she is in mourning. The other one has striped. They use the bicycle, uh, the yellow houses. Uh, this is um, this is at Ella's house, Lohu Ella. This is the sauna. Lots of uh, Kichno, uh, lots of children in, I guess, in, Est in Estonia all around uh, where they use sauna. They also used to have, give birth to their children in the sauna mm -hmm. because they had warm water there. So many children are born in the sauna, and I thought just this beautiful flowers and uh, also a traditional yellow farm in Kichno Island. Beautiful flowers. Uh, Kishno people love flowers. They love yellow houses. They paint their houses turquoise or purple or red or yellow. Uh, because we will see later also how much the color means in Kishno. I was going to say, Angelina, does it so the colors of the houses do these correlate? We'll get into the colors later, but it just it made me think: do the um, house color correlate to anything that the the clothing colors mean, or is that separate? I don't think so, but I really don't know. Uh, uh, well, maybe it's also what is possible to get for house coloring. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, no. I just wasn't yeah. sure. It just made me think in that moment. So yeah, sure. Um, but question. I have a question before we get into this part, when you begin with the colors, but that first trip, because I always find it interesting, especially like when I'm starting a project, you know, that first trip, what were you feeling like? Were you nervous? Were you, and not so much because I, I, we need to know everything about you in that moment, but it's, I think it's really interesting as the storyteller. How do you get there? How do you bring your being there? Like, are you guided with somebody that, to, to help you along? And are you nervous? Like, are you, and, and how was that first feeling? Did you feel welcomed from the beginning or was this also a journey? So, because I had uh, my knitting studio in Kerala, in Hioma, this bigger island, and I think I, I was quite good to be able to close down my company without, with, and paying people their wages and everything. So I think my reputation was quite okay because I behaved nicely. Because everybody could have said, okay, you couldn't do this. Of course, it's normal that you go bankruptcy, but I borrowed a lot of money from my father to pay everybody and had a, a sale. So I think I, I, I um, was the, received as a kind of nice person. And then my contacts in Hiyoma had contacts in Kichno Island. So somebody helped me. Some of my old friends in, in Hiyuma helped me to find the right person, which was Mare Matas in Kichno. And uh, I said, I'd like to come and take some pictures. And I was very welcomed. And I brought, of course, with me some pictures that I have taken earlier. Uh, I had photographed my mother just before she passed away. I think I showed, showed that kind of per pictures. And uh, I talked about my interest in culture. When I was there also, we will see later from the funeral, this lady died and I was asked to photograph the funeral. And so I was just let into the society in a very a natural way. You asked if I was nervous. I think I have been more, much more nervous about today than going there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's really the case, right? I find that as storytellers, so much of what we do is just intuitive. It's after the fact, when you start to think about it, you're like, wait a second, or how, or even how you present it out because it means so much to you. So you want to be, you want to hold it with the most tender hands. Um, because the experience means so much and it and as much as a part of your life it, as it is their life so at least yeah. that's what it shows to me yeah and uh, of course I brought back pictures I asked 
Maria helped me, the other ladies helped me. I got to stay with Oye private in her home. So I got some friends, some connections. And I, I understood that I need to talk with the older ladies and I was introduced uh, translators, I speak a little bit Estonian, I speak some German with Vilva, for instance, and also I show pictures, I, <laughs> I like to touch people, I like to hug them, uh, I'm very interested in this kind of things, their culture, uh, I love their animals. Uh, and of course, when I said I will bring back some pictures, I always did that, and um, I hope they think I was nice and that I was sincere and meant to do something good, it feels like it was that way. That was my intention. And I think that's really important if you say you want to give pictures to people that you do this. And I gave them quite large color prints of themselves. And when one lady got one picture, she showed to another one, which also wanted that picture. And it just evolved. Yeah. Well, I'll just say the thing with uh, giving photographs back, I always think that you can never ask for more than you're willing to give. And I think them giving you a photograph, allow, meaning allowing them to photograph you, the most, the most respectful you can do is share back the mirror that, that, they, you know, that you saw of them. And that's to me what giving back the photograph is. It's actually sharing back your, your, uh, your being of their communication of what went on. And so, yes, absolutely. I think if you don't give back pictures, you've only, you've only gone halfway into the work that, that you're doing. So. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, so this picture, so I know the colors are really, really important. Um, actually, I think the colors are kind of everything about this project, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, tell me what you learned about the colors, why they're so important. And also, um, you know, does that make, was that something that was decided when you would photograph this in color versus black and white? Yeah, because in the beginning, uh, one of my teachers said, you need to do the, the pictures in black and white. And I say, well, wait a second, you can't do that with Kichno because it's all about the colors. It's, uh, it couldn't be in black and white. And uh, because uh, as you say, the color means something. So the pictures we see now, it's an old red um, Kichno skirt, Kichno skirt. Uh, which was used in happy days. And then you have the blue striped skirt. It is for mourning and for widows, not when the, the grief is exactly there, but a little further on the widows are wearing mostly the rest of their lives, they are in blue. Um, the, uh, the red skirt is old and worn. If you see this picture, Tika Man, she is out on the field and she lost her husband, I think it was in 71 and she's still wearing uh, the blue morning clothes. She missed him so much and she was alone with all the three kids and take care of the farm. And uh, Ella, she's one of the most respectful handicraft masters, Lohu Ella on Kishno Island. She's a sweet, sweet person too. And you can see she wears these clothes daily, the knitting stockings. She has the stockings. She has the old loom in her home a uh, big, big handmade loom and she makes, uh, right now she's weaving Kichno skirts with the most beautiful colors. The old uh, oven where she used to heat up this room. Uh, and, uh, and also here she's knitting Tikaman in her home. She has a spinning wheel, which she makes the yarn. The yarn is homemade from her own sheep. The knitting needles is finer than you get in Norway. It's like uh, sewing needles and you get uh, your hands are getting ruined if you're not used to this. It can take weeks to, to make those uh, stockings. Um, and she's not, uh, yeah, not dressing for the picture. Here you can see the stockings, how they are used with the, the band to hold them tight. And you see they use their clothes um, even if it's a uh, moth has been eating on them, they use it as long as they can. And it's really intricate patterns, really difficult, intricate, beautiful folk co colors and, uh, and patterns. I have um, to say, I think this is one of my favorite photographs. It's so beautiful. It's so gentle and respectful. And, you know, she's like, you can tell that she's proud as well. It's really, really, really beautiful. I love oh, this image. Lovely that you say so. Yeah, she she's private in this picture, and she to, to me she's like a little girl showing her new clothes, but still she's 
kind of old at that time, maybe the age that I am now. <laughs> yeah. And the stockings on the wall. I like We're, we're sure. still in her home here. These are yeah. hers. Yeah, so much. The stockings are used as long as they can. And the patterns are different, but still kind of the same. Uh, yeah, I still have, yeah. And, uh, and Ayaman in her home in the red, uh, in the red skirt, uh, dressing up for the picture, I think. Uh, she was the most sweet person. Uh, I miss her. She was uh, hit by a car when she was bicycle and died one, more af one month after in the hospital. She was a strong woman. She took her, care of her grandson when her daughter died. She built her own ho house. As you can see, she's not wearing an apron, which means she wasn't married. Yeah, I want to talk about this. Um, I'm sorry, Anneli, can I do one thing? My screen, I have the entire chat box. You, nobody else sees it in the middle of the screen, so I can't see the images. So yeah. I just need to escape for one minute and I'll start again. Mm -hmm. I apologize, everybody, for this. I need to get the chat out and then let me start this again. Okay, sorry, are we back to the image? Perfect for me. Perfect. I apologize, everybody, for that. I could not see the image. So th there we go. Um, yeah. So yeah, so you were you were discussing about whether the woman has the apron or not. Yeah, I was telling. She she was a mother uh, or and she doesn't have an apron. And I think it means she wasn't married because the women, if you move to the next picture, uh, the women wearing an apron, which means she has or is married. She could be a widow and she could be divorced, but only married women are allowed to wear an apron. Uh, and I think that must go a long time back. It was to protect the reproductive part of the women's body, but it was also a sign um, because of course, in a small society, it was important that women could carry, carry a child. It was important to get married uh, because you needed uh, support it was very difficult for the women that didn't get married or didn't get children uh, and uh, as you can see she's walking back on bare feet she's wearing the blue stripes and the colors uh, her house the color on her house the roses in the garden uh, and mm -hmm. also here with Tido Mari uh, also one of the sweetest ladies, this is on her bed and you can see uh, she has the most beautiful uh, pillows and the pillow case is wonderfully embroidered and it's lace, the carpet or the rug on the, uh, on the wall is important, the colors. Well, I, was gonna say, I remember when I was reading something that I think maybe people wouldn't know if they, if they haven't read it yet is so that you if I understand correctly, there's something very important about the way um, a woman's bed is is set um, yeah. in the way th that structure around the bed is put together. Tell me a little bit about that because it's actually usually right. That's the most private part of the house. Why is it important? And also, who would be seeing it? Why is that? Why? What is that part of the tradition? Well, I think maybe I'm not sure if it is so important now, but I know in olden days it was. Uh, that the girls should have a very pretty bed. Uh, if uh, she ha should have lace on her pillowcase so that the others wouldn't say she was using a bread sack. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was showing if the bed was tidy, the girl was also tidy. She was good at handworks. Uh, it was important for a young girl to learn all the handicraft stuff and, and uh, to be able to manage on the farm. Uh, you shouldn't sit on the bed, but Tito Mari, she's sitting on bed for me here uh, for the picture. And soon after this picture was taken, they renovated the house and uh, the was changed. And actually, this sweet lady died on my birthday. So I'm very emotional about her. Uh, and she asked the last time I saw her, please give the pictures to my family because I want them to remember me how I was. And I think it's, uh, and this is during Christmas time. So she has been cooking. She would, wanted to put on another apron, but I, I said to her, please, have this on because it's so beautiful and the colors and everything so she this is what she was wearing in the kitchen but now she's posing on the bed for me uh, so sweet person and um, 
um, this is uh, this is uh, Sawendi Mon. Uh, I need to explain. Sawendi is the farm. Mon is her name, but it's a nickname. So she was Maria Lawrence. Maria's uh, in Kichno Island nickname for Maria is Mon. And in Norwegian, this is like meaning man up in Trendelag in the middle of Norway. So, but in Kishno Island, Man is the most beautiful women's name. So she was sitting there on the, and, and she uses the name of surname after the farm, which was common here too. Some long time ago, they used the farm name to tell people who, you know, to, instead of surnames. So, so in the month she was sitting there and I was observing her and I was, she didn't know I took her picture, but uh, we got in contact and the first time thing she, she said to me was, soon I too will be here. Mm -hmm. She's sitting on the grave on husband, mother and father, and probably her son too. So when you came to this, she didn't know you were there. You were you were able to come up and, and make this without her uh, being disturbed, if you want to say that. And then afterwards, you started the relationship. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I got help from a translator, and I was allowed to follow her home. She was running like a young girl to the forest, and I was <laughs> running after the best I could. And um, I, of course, with the digital, you can show what you have been doing. And of course, she got the picture. And uh, if you move to the next picture, this is the same lady. She, she became the cover. <laughs> she became the cover. And Erika, you asked me why this picture? Because when you are making a book, you need to find the picture for the cover. And for me, I tried with another picture sometime and then and when I found this, I never looked back because when I look at her, she is um, in a reflective mo mood, mo mode. Maybe she thinks about what she has been experienced. Maybe think she thinks about the future. Uh, we were there with the interpreter and we talked a lot about all kinds of things. And this is uh, in the moment she's working in the field. The dress is unique. She's not dressed up for me uh i love her eyes and uh, i also can see how she looked like when she was a young girl in this picture with these big blue eyes and a uh, very sweet uh, lovely woman that had a hard life she in the russian time she was sent out to cut down trees in the forest and the tree f fell on her young son and killed him and somebody told me this story and told that she every day the rest of her life hoped that she was the one that was killed and not her son and Somehow I can see these stories and, and her hard working hands and the wrinkles and I just love this picture and it had to be on the cover. Mm -hmm. uh, some meetings you never forget. Yeah. Yeah, it's also interesting how these images like how should I say every foam, you know, it's kind of but these pictures right in all of this. It's the cover of the book, but all of this, it does, it holds all the history, all the stories are in these. And they, you know, cause we hold it, we hold it in our body, we hold it in our soul. And she was giving you that gift to end the trust because you had that respect to, to be able to, to show that. And I really agree. Everything you said when I, I've seen the book, but you're right. There's a lot of the images could have been the cover, but I feel this really well represents all the work in the book it's really really <laughs> beautiful and um uh, one thing i want to bring up i know we're going to get onto this here but there's something for me that's also really interesting about the work that i took away i, I finished the i actually just finished reading the book this week um and those that are going to get the book please you have to sit and read it as well as much as it is a photography book of storytelling it is really a written book of photography it's it's gorgeously it's really I should say very personally and intimately written between a mix of um, the women as they told you this also and Helene's um, interpretation of her time with them and, and her self-reflection on it. But, but one thing that when I closed the book at the end, there was a bit of sadness for me because I think 
um, as much of a celebration of their life, many of the women have, have passed and, and some of like their houses are now torn down. And, and so there's this sort of in-between of what is um, where the future is going, but really what has passed. Um, can you talk to a little bit about that? Because for me, all of these pictures hold both of those moments. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, um, of course, it's, it's really hard to work with old people because they are this they are just can't be here forever and uh, uh, the culture is changing the way the this these girls when they when they were young they grew up in a different society they grew up in soviet union they were farm lives uh, long story about kichno island when the first it was the, the soviets for one year it was the germans for three and a half years and then it was the soviet union and the soviet occupation for nearly 50 years and when the russians came back they say the russians in in kichno island uh, Forty percent uh, of the population fled to the west. So you are one thousand people, and four hundred are leaving to the west, to Sweden, to America, some to Rukno Island, which is far out in the in the sea, a little island there. So you can imagine for all those people going away, leaving the island. Is this correct? Is it correct to stay behind? Um, four hundred people leaving, six hundred people staying. It must have been incredibly hard times for them. And this has been, uh, of course, um, um, their lives has been uh, uh, affected by, by this kind of an event. And Ella was a young girl at that time, Ella Lohuela in this picture. And um, I just love this picture myself because it is, this is a quiet moment. She shows me how she dressed up. This is her. Her bedroom, the bed is in the back, but it's also her working room where she makes these beautiful clothes. Pictures on the wall, you can even see some of my photographs in the plastic uh, folders in the, on the wall. And, and the quiet moment, the natural light, all my uh, images is in uh, natural light. Uh, of course, you don't bring big flashes or, or studio lights to such a place. You use the natural light as best as you can. And uh, of course, working for so many years, meeting so many people, uh, maybe five different cameras and lenses and everything. It's trying to mix everything together and pick out the right pictures, the right moments. I don't know if I answered your question though. <laughs> no, you did not. It's just, yeah, of course, of course. And also, I just want to say on this image, it's so intimate. It's really, really, in, it's really intimate without being invasive. And that's a, um, especially for the photograph photographers in, in the audience today, that's really hard. It's really hard to do that, to make an intimate moment and not be invasive and feel like um, you're stepping too far. You can see everything without asking for everything. And this, this, picture is really the epitome of that for me. Um, we spent many days together and that's important also in a project like this that you ask if you can come back and you spend time in the daily life and you share the food sometimes and bring back the pictures and show what you are doing and try to explain why you are doing this uh, also yeah. Uh, uh, this story very is really important. Uh, and uh, because always Kishno Vilvesh is photographed uh, in the happy days with uh, uh, the mod modern kind of full costumes and, and uh, here she's out working in the field. This is her daily life, uh, which I think was more important. Here she is with her son. If you see, she's wearing the dark black skirt. She has just lost her husband and her daughter. She's photographed with her son. Uh, Can you talk a bit about that? Because if I remember correctly, right, she's quite well known. This this woman is very, very well known, correct? Yeah, she's a folk singer. Everybody loves her. And uh, in New Year's Eve, they come to make programs with her on Estonian TV. And, and then, uh, yeah, I think you said something, though, of being such a, um, if you want to use the word famous or someone that's very well respected and well known, she never had a picture with her son. That's true. That's the story. And uh, I brought back this picture. It's taken during Christmas time, as you can see from the window. And uh, uh, she asked if also Eddie could have the picture because uh, they wanted a copy themselves. And of course, 
of course they got this. And I thought, okay, uh, Virve is maybe, uh, she's born in 28, so maybe she is 86 or something on this picture, and her son is in the 50s maybe, and now this is the first image, and it was in time, I think, and they, you can see how much they care, this little woman, she's holding <laughs> her hand around the neck of her boy, and um, yeah. And that also, I mean, I'm not sure if you're ready to get into it, but I'll just bring it up now and we can leave it out there. But that says something, I mean, right, that's also one of the first pictures besides the tourist sort of version in the beginning where we see a man. And, yeah. and talk to me about that because I think that why, why are men not photographed very much? I know they are there a little bit, but also I think from what I see in these images, right, these like, these women are holding even the, the men in their in their face in the work that they do and everything, but it is quite rare to have an image with a man in it. So I don't know, at one point, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Like, where are the men? What is that like? Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, uh, an island uh, and the men has been to sea. And uh, as you know, um, the sea is taking the lives very often. So many of the women are widows or they have lost sons to the sea uh that it's the hard life um so lots of widows and uh also i experienced that uh, the men didn't so much want to be in the pictures uh but most of the women i have photographed are widows and uh and that's the part of the story it's the hard life of kishno and mania women that they lose husbands and sons to the sea and uh as I know, you know, when you go out in the fishing boat, it's not only one man that is lost, it can be two and three and four, and even more men that are lost at the same time. Um, and then women are left with, with even more struggle. So the women have been doing everything on land, the farm, the tractors, every hard left animals, the clothing, bringing up the children, um, while men has been traveling the sea, doing the seal hunt, the fishing, um, and leaving the land to the women. It has been in this way for ages. And uh, I had to, uh, if you go back to Rilke An, it's the same woman in these two pictures. Uh, I also had to include the hard lives. If you look at her hands, this is, uh, such a hard life and uh, and her hut was falling, the house was falling down. This is in her living room and the bed. This picture is so beautiful. It says so much. And she dressed up for me because that time she knew she was I was coming and she was very patient and she had the most soft cheeks I've ever hugged. It was like hugging a baby and I, I will never forget this. And Maybe she's wearing a man's sweater, I think so, to me it looks like, but she has the Kichno cut, she has the, the care chief, beautiful roses on the curtains, and she had nothing. And I think that was important also to include in the book, uh, the hard lives, but not to focus on only on that. This is also, it's very easy when you do a big project that you overlook some pictures, you don't see them when you go through, and I, I have taken a lot of pictures and going back and back and back and looking. One day I found this uh, image, which I really love too. She, this is the reflective moment. She looks like she's thinking back or she's praying. She's in black, so, which means she's in grief. Her skirt is black. This is her bedroom. Um, I love this picture and this picture too. Yeah, this picture. I mean, look at her. Yeah. Hands, so beautiful. I have it on my wall in my home. <laughs> but this says so much too, because you mentioned that the women don't often sit on the bed in public, but they're doing this for you. It just shows that they're very comfortable and they trust you. And these images seem very, very honest. Yeah, thank you. And look at her, how, how this beautiful profile and how proud she is and uh, uh, the hairstyle, the clothing in her room. Oh, oh, also this uh, uh, Anni, she was always sitting there in the summer days with her dog. We bought sausages for the dog. This is her kitchen. 
I thought that was important too to take pictures. And you can see the beautiful colors. Of course, she she was very poor. This is uh, her stove. They are using the wood to heat to make the food. And is it the woman that's actually taking care of all this? The woman takes care of the kitchen. The woman would chop the wood also, or is that a mix yeah. of, of men and women's work? Oh, no, that's the women's work. The women's Everything work. on dry land is the woman's work. And you can see the colors. This is on her stove, the cooking pot. And it's important also to include those details when you make a book, because a book about only with portraits would be very hard to look at. Uh, these details, the colors, um, her wall on me as a young woman, you can she, see she was a proud young woman, it's probably her parents. Uh, the chocolate boxes uh, hanging in the frame with the dogs. Um, <laughs> but it's also talking, really yeah. important when you see this to, to understand how, you know, I don't know if important's the word, but how much a part of the life photographs are for people. Yeah. I mean, they really, really, I see that in all the work when I was, well, most of the places, especially like the, the smaller villages that I work in over the years, it's like what the first thing I do is, is notice the photographs on the wall because that tells so much. It also tells so much about what's important for people, what they put on the wall to celebrate talks about who they are. And I love this. And, and I think, again, it, that helps me to remember um, that I have to continue to carry what I do respectfully because it really is part of people's individual history and, and also our collective history. Um, so we need to do that with a certain amount of, 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 of care and, and, and thinking. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's pointless to without respect. It, I couldn't do it without people feeling that I try to do my best and portray them in the most respectful way. That's so important. Also, a at home when she's knitting. The story is the kitchen. Uh, and this is uh, in the Tika farm and the, the brown door in the corner, it leads to the cow shed, which is really rare. It's just one of the old houses when you can go from the kitchen into the cow, uh, to the barn actually. Mm. And the, the um, where she's uh, making her fish, the red boxes is from the Russian times. Um, her living room, which this is a picture, a very simple picture. I love it. <laughs> I love this picture. I love it. It's all these details. Sometimes they tell you the portraits. I feel like the portraits bring us into the women, but this also, this is like, you can imagine so much. You can imagine the life going on in these images. This gives yeah. us room. It's like when you're reading a story and you have to create the visual of what the characters look like. To me, in these images, it brings me in like a like a good novel because I can imagine the life going on, you know? Yeah, and you can't you can't change it. It needs to be the way it is. You can't move things, then it doesn't look right. So it needs to be photographed the way it is. And then the Kishno Kurt, the Kishno skirt hanging on the wall in the, in the way they just hang it like that. That's the way they store it. And the bread on the floor on the newspaper. Yeah, I think that tells the story also. Homemade sourdough bread, so good, really good. And the old couple together have been living together forever and he is hiding his beer and she knows where he hides it and he is laughing <laughs> and said she wants uh, to, uh, that he wants to find a younger woman and she wants to find another man and uh, um, their lives and the, and the Christmas tree. And also for me, when I go through all this and you start to see these small moments um, the Christmas coming, a man in the home. You, as a as a as a photographer, you really realize how much time you spent going back and going back again. Because for anyone that it doesn't do that kind of work, you know, you have to understand how much time and care it takes. You, this is to continue to build up a body of work that could tell a story like this. You have to continually dedicate yourself to to the next time and the next time, and that's how you get invited 
I think how those doors open more and more. The door actually gets wider and wider open each time you go back. Yeah, and you go back to visit your friends and see how they are and, and bring back some things. And I've been the lucky one that has been able. I'm so grateful for this project. It's the most important work of my life. I mean, this house is not looking like this anymore. This is Our Lady from the cover. So Wendy Mann, you can see how tiny she is. She doesn't even reach to the floor and how tidy everything is. And is still... she the one that also... Who made um, a dress for you? Was it her? No, this is the other one, the Ella with the, it was dressing, you know, the headpiece. Ah, okay, yes, in the beautiful yeah. picture in the front. Yeah, okay. no, okay. no, she's the farm lady and, and the one with the sun. And, uh, and this is so beautiful. Details. Yeah, and you couldn't arrange this. This is like how it was on the colors, the patterns, the roses, the soap, this, um, yeah, important things. And here you have this rod that shows that nobody's at home. They, yeah, don't, they didn't used to have locks on the doors. I think they maybe have more when tourists are coming, but the tradition and those old hands outside working with the apples okay. and the cat. I mean, uh, Tika Man has now got a new door and I'm happy my picture had with the old door and I'm happy she has a new door. But of course the cat gets food, they love the animals. Uh, she's the hardworking farmer. Here she is again. I spent so much time with her. That's why she is in so, so many pictures. And if you go back one, uh, the, she has uh, slaughtered one of her sheep for Christmas and uh, she couldn't tan the sheep, uh, sheep skin anymore. So it was hung for the little birds to eat the fat. So everything is taken care of. Yes, everything has a purpose. Yeah, she, she feeds the little animals and this is this moment in the barn, the perfect light actually. Yes, it is the perfect light. <laughs> the, the light we're all waiting for. It's really true. Yeah. And uh, in the barn, uh, and of course, natural light, of course, Photoshop helps also, but all this documentary edited, it means I've just used Dodge and Burn uh, and uh, emphasized, uh, I've done, done a little bit of cropping, but um, nothing major. Now the, uh, the part of the barn is empty because she doesn't have the cow anymore. If you see on the right hand side, there is no cow. It used to be there. Mm -hmm. And the sheeps were, sheep were very shy. So I just uh, shot this picture through the very slice in the door, opened the door very gently and took the picture. Uh, the shoes. Yes, I are... love this detail, the shoes. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. The moments, the little things is important. And uh, also this story, because everything uh, is a resource. So in Kishno, they use apples for jam. They used to make apple juice in the Russian times. Nobody's picking apples anymore. And that is the reason we will see now. I love this picture too, with all those apples. But of course, it's sad because nobody lives here anymore. That's why they don't pick the apples. And in her kitchen, her hands, she was lying there in the coffin. So this is important. So um, I know you know the story really well, but maybe everyone else is not. So now tell us what we're about to see. Um, and actually this, I assumed that this was something took years for you to get, but actually it seems that you often find your beginning at the end. That's what I'm noticing for you. Much of your beginnings start at the end of something. So bring us into this, please. This story is very, very important. Yeah, well, as I said, I visited Kishno Island first time in 2005 when I was working with my knitting designs and things. And then when I started to study photography in 2008, I went back and to take some pictures, uh, meet people. And all of a sudden this old lady, she died. And I was asked to come to photograph her funeral. She passed away just three hours earlier in her bedroom next to the kitchen. And uh, this is emotional for me also. Uh, and I was dressed up in morning clothes. I was asked to take the picture. And of course, when you are in such a, uh, a setting, you can't push the 
you can't take many pictures. You need to be quiet. You need to be respectful. My heart was jumping. Uh, it was so emotional. It was totally beautiful. The women were singing. It was praying. Everybody dressed in blue. And um, as you can see, Leda in the coffin, I never met her when she was alive, but she, I, she passed away from cancer. She was, she was very skinny. Uh, she had everybody started to prepare the funeral clothes when they are about in the 60s in Kichno Island of women so they want to be be buried in very beautiful clothes so she had the most beautiful clothes she had the stockings made for herself she had the uh, gold cross uh, around her neck and um, this is three days later um, before we are going to the church everybody was gathering again now we are in the church beautiful decorated so she uh, made all of the everything she's wearing she put together yes she's made it for herself and also uh, women pick out six grave diggers for themselves and they are knitting glo gloves or, or mittens for the grave diggers and put names on them so they know after the funeral when she's in the earth that they are taken care of uh, and this is the greek orthodox church uh, saint nicholas church you will see her sons on the left hand side, the women, the choir singing, the women sitting there. Um, incredibly beautiful and very respectful. Everybody were personally saying goodbye to her. Uh, this is uh, more like an All Saints Day when it's not the funeral, women are gathered together. Uh, I think that they are remembering all the people that have passed away. Uh, going to the cemetery afterwards, uh, all this, uh, yeah, and this is Kichno Cemetery this with the flowers. Beautiful. This is actually Kichno Wilbe's family grave with her son, her daughter. And, uh, and, and now also, here, this is important because I think we're going to move to a bit of a different section now in, in the work. Yeah, and uh, this is just uh, uh, one beautiful day at the beach in Kichno Island. Uh, uh, for me, this is an, an, a very beautiful landscape. Uh, I don't know what you call it in, in English, but the sea has moved out a little bit. You see part of the uh, bottom that is there, the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the reason why this picture is here is because now we are moving to another island, which is called Banya. And uh, this is on Mania Island. Uh, um, uh, in, uh, in 1929, it was the huge depression, or grand, big depression in everywhere. And it also hit in Estonia. It also hit here in the Baltic Sea. And uh, the families had grown big. Uh, they were poor and uh, they couldn't live. There were 1,000 people on Kichno Island and it was impossible to find enough animal food. So they were looking from, for, oh, somebody can't hear. I can't not hear you anymore, he's saying. Hmm. Mm. Sure, I didn't do anything. Um, yeah, I, we can hear, I can hear, I'm not sure. That might be their connection. Okay, because like, I'm not touching anything. <laughs> no, it might be their connection. Yeah, okay. So, so, um, but we will, this will be available later also. So uh, 100 people or 22 poor families were able to move to this tiny little pancake flat, flat uh, um, island called Mania in 1933 and to build the life there because they couldn't live on Kichno Island. They couldn't find food for their animals and they needed a house, a cow for, for the milk and a horse for the field work. So they had to move. So now we are in this little tiny island. Uh, at the most, there were 150 people living there. Now it's about 25 old people left. Oh. And uh, wonderful story, hard life. Um, Nene Mari in her bedroom again, <laughs> beautiful colors on the wall. She was nearly blind at this moment and she was, she moved to the nursing home shortly after the room was repainted, which happens when people take over places, but she's sitting there so uh, dignified. And if you look at the picture, you can see in the drawer that she has more aprons, young pictures on the uh, on the 
uh, of herself and her husband, the old books, everything. Uh, it's one of my picture. Love, love this picture so much too. And uh, and her sister getting really old, looking at me with its eyes, and I can just imagine what she has been experiencing. Uh, to me, her eyes tell so much. And uh, the colorful culture, as we talked about again, colors in the, in uh, in the clothing, colors in interior, the pink. The pink plastic, the curtains, the uh, rugs on the wall, carpets on the wall. Moi Saman, fantastic um, handicraft person. You see what she's sitting on her bed again. <laughs> I know, all the, as much as they're not supposed to, they all sit on their bed for you. But I think it's it also it all feels so natural and they feel so proud. And apparently, if that's one of the places that's supposed to be the most beautiful, it maybe they. They really want to show that to you. It's really, they all feel very intimate, but like very open to you. Yeah. And they just look at me because I don't ask, I don't never ask people to smile to the camera. I just like the honest look. And this, this women has this natural look and, uh, yeah. and uh, also um, look at those eyes, Anni, Vanna Yuri Anni. How she's looking. She has just talked about her son that died at sea. And uh, so much sorrow and so much love for the animals. This is herself with the sheep. So much love in this picture, I think. I love the kneeling down. You, yeah, you can see like when someone's kneeling, I mean, there's just as hard working as they look, there's so much gentleness. That's also a really beautiful balance that you've brought to the work that they, it looks you can tell it's a hard life. Like there's no denying it, but every picture looks as soft as like a cloud. Oh. <laughs> really, really beautiful. I mean, and we do that with animals that will kneel and hug them and she's doing this. And uh, uh, a picture of the landscape with the car that is not running, the boat is on, uh, in the land. Uh, sister and brother on the farm when, where she was growing up. That um, beautiful yellow. Yeah, the yellow house, how strong. Uh, Sugiman was, she's in blue because she was just lost her twin sister. Mm -hmm. So it means anything. These clothes mean so much to them and, and uh, learning that this has a deeper meaning um, in the kitchen. The joy, she was so happy in this moment. In the next moment, she was talking about something else. Uh, Vatra Helio was her name, and she asked me to go down to the field because she really wanted the picture with her cow that was called Mari. And uh, I remember these names, and, and uh, uh, she has dressed up for me the most beautiful clothes she have, and it's still uh, the genuine uh, culture, uh, co um, uh, costumes. And it's normal that you dress up when the, you go to the photographer also. We would do that all the time. And uh, well. And so this, we're getting, um, uh, so this is towards the end of, of the photographs. So I think now we're in two, is this 2011? Yes. Can you talk about this? So this is part of your, your exhibition. This yeah. work has traveled. Um, obviously it, it showed in Estonia. And it's also traveled in different parts of the world. So if you don't, I'm interested because I also think, you know, when you have an exhibition of your work and all the people from the village or all the people in, in of the work are at the exhibition, that says a lot. So talk about this, please. Yeah, they're, this is, they're waiting to come into the opening of the exhibition. This is in Kishno Museum, which was really a good place to start the exhibition because it's about them. And it was, everybody was coming there. You can see young and old people, the pictures on the wall. And of course, in 2011, I had photographed uh, more sunny days and not winter time yet. And uh, not the more harder pictures, but uh, lots of pictures uh, on the wall, uh, young people, old people playing folk dance, accordions, singing. Um, dancing for for us for them it was a huge celebration 
And this exhibition, uh, now we are just outside of the parliament in Tallinn. Everybody are going in to opening the exhibition in, in the in lobby in the parliament, up to, uh, to the entrance. Everybody has dressed up the best they can. We are in the, with the president of the parliament sitting mm. there, had a good time. Um, also on the walls, um, hanging there. Uh, the black door. This is where the representatives in the parliament usually meet with the press. So it was uh, the women in Kishin had seen themselves on the TV when the representatives were talking and remembered hopefully about the people they were representing. I think that was wonderful and uh, uh, a great event for them and for me, of course, very <laughs> fantastic to be able to show my work in these places and 22 places in seven years isn't that bad actually well i was about country. to say that like how yeah the, well so you answered it 22 places and, and i don't know how you think about this but for me one of the most important things in the storytelling is that once i've created the work there's a part of me that has to just let it go it is now has a life of its own right the story was never mine to begin with right i was just a part of it for a moment it mm -hmm. then takes then but it really births another life and and i think it's really important as photographers that the respect and the, and the honor that we have to do is is when we're creating the work but then we have to trust just like children that the they'll go out it goes out into the world and it has that but it has to take a life of its own and, um, and you never know, 22, 22 exhibitions going, and you know, you trust that, that, that the core of the story was when you and the women created it, now it's out into the world and, and it made its way to China, it's this. I think she froze again. Okay. Um, I'll let her come back and then we're, we're right at the end here, but um, she'll come back on to talk, but uh, the work made its way to China. Sorry, and Helene, we're, we're back to China here. Yeah, so uh, I was invited for this uh, third China International Photography Biennale, and I was invited there. My partner and I went there. I, of course, Beijing was really fantastic, and having the pictures on the wall, seeing the Chinese are looking at the pictures from the funeral. Uh, great honor. And um, well, I'm going, um, I'm going to stop my part of the presentation now, and I think um, we'll take. We're going to move here for some questions for everybody. There was a lot of very nice compliments to you, Anna Helena, and your work and and preserving the culture at Kimo. Oh. <laughs> And I'll send them to you. Uh, there was one from Jean at, in the beginning. Let me just get to it. If there's any more questions for everyone, please put them in the um, the chat function. Uh, okay, Jean uh, asks, uh, it's clearly important to you that uh, you're not only to document this culture, but to also do it in a visually beautiful way. Every photo or photograph is a beautifully composed with delicate light and great attention to every detail in the frame. Can you tell me about how you hold yourself to a standard of not making or showing pictures that are in that are interesting moments, but when the light is bad or the background is too busy? What is the difference between your approach and that of a tourist uh, image? Well, I think I need to, first of all, uh, make the pictures that I love and uh, try to make them as beautiful as possible. If there was something wrong with the lighting or something happened, of course, I didn't put the, the, those pictures in the, in the book. And uh, of course, the selection is a big part of it and the editing process since it took so many years when I started with this project until I finished the photography part of it. Um, uh, need to be hard on yourself and and uh, it could easily be <laughs> the double size this book but uh, it will be too too much for people and too expensive and maybe I don't know it's uh, I, I just pick picked pictures that I thought was uh, which I liked or cared for uh, that had the standard that I liked that was uh, the technical part was all right uh, of course uh, sometimes you 
cannot use all the pictures you like because it could be too bad or too, too good the picture also. Sometimes you need to leave things out that doesn't tell the story. Uh, I have of course taken many tourist pictures but I didn't want to include that because then I was telling another story. I could have chosen pictures of uh, young people but this was about old people. So if, when you find the line, all of the things falls into place in a way. And uh, Erica is showing us the book itself. So again, if anyone would like to purchase this, the links are in the chat function and you can purchase it in Europe and in the US uh, from uh, Dewey Lewis Publications. And it's so, I, I can attest, it is beautifully, beautifully printed. And there's so much, um, there's just, the only way you'll get the these beautiful stories that that Anne Helena uh, briefly shared with us today is you can go in, there's just beautiful text inside. Um, but yeah, this is the book. It's actually quite hefty and it's really beautiful. So sorry, yeah. Anne Helena, some people were asking in the chat to show the book and I forgot to do it. So. Wonderful. And the text is in English, but also in Norwegian, in the same book. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. It's in English and in the back there's that Norwegian section. So. Yeah. Well, there doesn't look like there's any more questions. So mm -hmm. I would like to thank, uh, I would like to thank all of our partners and collaborators in the event, the Consulate General of Estonia, the Royal Norwegian Consulate General, the Kino Cultural Space Foundation, the Kino Museum, Dewey Lewis and Dewey Lewis Publishing, uh, the Norwegian Professional Photographers Fund and the Norwegian Nonfiction and Translation Association. And especially I would like to thank Erica for moderating this talk. And of course, the big, big, big thank you to Anne-Helene uh, Gelstad for giving us this work um, and preserving this wonderful culture for everyone. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't die out and uh, we have a, a wonderful document of this. And I, can, I, I must also say thank you to everybody because this is about other people. It's not so much about me, all the generosity, everybody that has been helping me. Everybody has been arranging this to you, to Erika, to the general consuls and everybody in, in New York. I, I'm so honored and so grateful. And this is my biggest work of my life and I cannot be thankful enough. So from my heart, big hugs to everybody. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we are making a recording of this uh, talk, so it will continue. Uh, you can find it at the Scandinavia.org uh, website, as well as our YouTube page. Um, and I'm sure we'll share it around. I'm sure that uh, it will be available elsewhere. So thank you again. Uh, and thank you everyone for tuning in. We hope to be able to see everyone in person soon. Hopefully by the fall, we'll be able to uh, meet in person. So thank you again. And uh, please do come back and visit uh, us again. Okay. Bye. Bye.